So the other day I come across a bike enthusiast. Well, I, I suppose you could say he's in my extended, my very extended family. Anyway, he's a bike enthusiast, rides a very good high powered bike on the road, but he didn't know the difference between air cooled and water cooled engines. And he thought his bike was air cooled, which obviously, I think he, I think it's a um, GSXR 600 or something like that way he rides. Anyway, so this has prompted me to make a video to explain the difference between air-cooled and water-cooled engines and how they work. So let's start off with this one that I've just put new radiators on. Basically, we'll start from the top with a water-cooled engine. This applies for any engine that's water-cooled, whether it be a car, petrol or diesel, a machine, a digger, a motorbike, a lawnmower that might be water-cooled, some of the bigger ones are. Anything that happens to be water-cooled with a radiator, air-cooled don't have a radiator. If it's water-cooled, it'll have a radiator like this with a few pipes here and there. So let's start from the top. You have your radiators. You have one either side on a motorbike. The motorhome up here has informed me that some only come with one radiator. Never seen one myself with one. Um, I would have thought if it only comes with one, it's... Well, why would you only have one? Anyway... So you have your radiators, you put the coolant in the top and what happens is, because these have, um, you've got one on the other side to prove it, you can't see, you can just see a bit. Anyway, what happens is, because these have got a big surface area, the air goes through them. Now, if you have a look in there, you can see some fins. Some of them are a little bit uh, bent, because that's how they came on this particular radiator. But what happens is, if you look hard enough, and with your own eyes, you'll be able to see through those fins to the other side near enough. Now inside the radiator is tubes where the water goes and the fins, they collect all the air, the cold air that goes through which cools down the water as it's being pumped by the water pump, which we'll get to in a minute being pumped through the radiator, the air goes through cold takes all the heat out of the water which then gets pumped around the engine um, it goes through all the waterways inside the engine and just cools down the heat, gets rid of the heat, takes the heat um, brings the heat back up the other side back into the radiator where it then gets cooled down again so that's how that works, you've got pipes at the bottom and everything like that now the bigger the radiator the more it's going to cool so that's why it's important when you're designing an engine or if you're um, changing your radiator on your engine it's important to make sure that you have one that's ample at least ample for the size of the engine and the work that it's going to be doing the more work it does if it's under heavy load you're going to need a bigger radiator and a fan as well that will mimic airflow yes it's, it's always surprising how many people don't understand that you have to have airflow going through a radiator for it to work now I should also mention that uh, in the older days people just used to put water in the radiators and in which case I still do and on occasion but you can get corrosion and things of aluminium heads and aluminium blocks etc etc but water also has a boiling point of 100 degrees and when it's pressurised in a cooling system which most of them are pressurised the pressure will heighten the boiling temperature but coolant has a higher temperature a higher boiling temperature I should say than water so you got that and then you've got I don't know I don't know the exact boiling temperatures they're all different but when you put um, when you put them under pressure in a pressurized system the temperature at which it will boil goes up again so you know m most engines I mean my my car happens to have a working temperature of a hundred and what was it, 115 degrees and the fan comes on at 120 to bring it back down to 100 right, it likes to run between 100 and 115 degrees so, you know, all cars are different and everything like that, that's just a, a bit of an example for you it is possible to overcool the engine but I won't go into too many details because you've come to watch this video to find out the difference between air cooled and water cooled you know, I could go into a lot of detail as to the size of radiators, how they work etc etc but I'll do that another day or if I get requested if you want to know more details about overcooling and undercooling and all this rubbish that goes with you know, putting a radiator on an engine 
then just ask and I'll make a video on that. But yeah, basically you have a water pump. This is the water pump on this particular engine. It's here. On these engines, they run from a gear inside that runs straight off the crankshaft. But if you're on a car or a lorry or something like that, they'll usually be run from a belt, an external belt on the outside of the engine that will run off the crank on the outside via a pulley which was they're quite easy to replace a water pump you know they do they do uh, they like to the bearings like to go quite often on water pumps so yeah it's a change of water pump on this you know to take all apart etc but on a car you just uh, take the um, take the the belt off and undo it and take the water pump out put a new water pump in etc now these don't have a thermostat on a car or a bigger engine they'd have a thermostat which would regulate when the water flows around you know when it, as it gets hotter etc but these don't no thermostat on this bike not on, not on these ones anyway so basically the water pump just takes the water from this radiator pumps it around the engine pumps it into the other one it gets exchanged goes through across into this radiator back down again and keeps going around to cool it down now let's have a look at an air cooled engine but before we do, I should show the best view that I can get. Let's get a torch. Now, this is the best view that I can get for, on this bike at the moment. But you see in there, that's the, uh, the cylinder where the piston is. Now, that is completely smooth. There is no, there's no fins or anything on there at all. That's completely smooth. So there's no way, really, that that's going to be able to call itself. I mean, it would be all right if you're going quick, but that's not the point. So here we go. We found ourselves a typical air-cooled engine. Now, the first thing that you'll notice, it looks completely different. For one, there's no radiator attached to it, no water pipes, no nothing. Now, what there is, is there's a load of fins on the engine, if we can ever have a look at it properly. Bloody hell! I found a frog. What's that doing in here? The frogs keep invading this, though, for some reason. I don't know why they're going to bloody dry out in here. Anyway, enough of the frogs. You'll notice that there's actually fins on this engine. Now the fins, what they do, some or veins, veins or fins, veins are also a word for these fins. Either way, people call them different things. I used to call them veins. I don't know why I called them fins, really. But what they do is that disperse. It's like a heat sink. Basically, this is a giant heat sink. And it disperses all the heat. And really... You need, these engines need the air, whereas the other, the water cooled one needs the airflow to be around the radiators, through the radiators. Air cooled engines, they need the air to be going around the actual engine itself so that it can disperse the heat through these fins. So, the disadvantage of an air cooled engine is you can't really have the engine itself in a closed environment because. There's no way there's going to be any air going through there. You're going to need a fan blowing on the engine. That's what lawnmowers and generators have. They have a fan built into the flywheel that will blow air on the engine. That's how generators, air-cooled generators and lawnmowers stay cool enough while they're running in one place. Whereas any, if you get a generator, the bigger generators that have radiators, some of them have oil-cooled radiators where they have a radiator that runs off the engine oil and it cools just the engine oil, just an, it's basically a big oil cooler. But they don't have any water radiators. Some of them have them, I've come across a few. They just purely cool the oil down, which is sufficient enough to keep the engine cool. They can work as well. But if you've got a generator with a radiator, you can have the engine itself away in, in, a, in a box or whatever, and you just have the radiator outside in the airflow with the pipes coming down. That would work ample. So that's the difference, and you can tell by the, the look is very different as well. And you can get two-stroke diesel and four-stroke engines in either water or air-cooled or oil-cooled. There is also oil coolers, but I haven't got one to show you, so I'll do a separate video on an oil cooler, and you know, you can see how that works. Basically, it's just a radiator that the oil goes through to cool the oil down. Basically, that's all it is. But you've got to remember, there's advantages and disadvantages to every design of everything in the world. One of the advantages of having an air-cooled engine is there's no danger of any mixing up. Because if a head gasket goes, or some other gasket for that matter, uh, on a water-cooled engine, the water will mix with the oil, go a bit creamy, and also cause potential damage to the engine because the oil is going to be full of water or coolant. 
and you'll lose power, lose compression, and you need to change that head gasket. Most of you probably heard of a head gasket or head gasket change or the head gasket's gone. Most people mistake the head gasket going for other problems because they don't understand, but that's not the point. That is an advantage of having an air-cooled engine. That won't happen. If the head gasket does go, you'll just lose a bit of compression and have a bit of a leak. There's actually somebody with a PW80 that's got a bit of a leak on their, on their head gasket and it was causing it to run. Uh, very lean and rev up. I don't know if they fixed it, but uh, that was commenting on one of my videos, and that's what happened. But they, they're air cooled engines, PW80. This is actually a PW80, and the leak on their one, I've forgotten your YouTube name if you're watching this, terribly sorry, but the leak was on here where it joins up onto the crankcase, and the head gasket, the gasket had gone, it was causing it to suck in there and run lean and rev up. So fixing that would have fixed the problem. My original point was if you've got a water cooled engine you've got potential for the gaskets to go you mix it up then you know it's another thing to fail basically better performance better cooling are the advantages disadvantages it's another thing to go wrong and another thing to have to fix so you know there's advantages and disadvantages to all of that